have the Ghana flag, please? <laughs> Madam Chairperson, colleague aspirants, Chairman, members of the Game Changer campaign team, club administrators here in Garded, the president, my chief inspirer of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana, my colleague media personnel here in Garded, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking everybody, really, really, a big thank you to everybody who have traveled far and wide to be here to attend to this all important meeting, the launch of the manifesto of the Game Changer team. We have all made this journey, of course, for a reason, to listen to the message of hope for the revival of the passion of the nation, the sport that is consumed in well over 211 countries across the world. A sport which has sunk into oblivion following the airing of the number 12 video footage. Madam Chairperson, I am deeply humbled but in my heart, I know that all of you came here with hope and believe that the Ghana Football Association with the right leadership can be what it's supposed to be. In the face of despair, you believe there is hope somewhere. In the face of football politics that has divided us for so long, you believe we can come together as one unit with a common purpose and spirit. The journey to this day started when I was 17 years old. We are here today because at the age of 17, I had a dream. The dream that will ensure that today we will all be guided to listen to the Change Game Manifesto. At the age of 17, I owned a coast football club called Shooting Stars. At the age of 17, I was the team captain. At the age of 17, I was the head coach. And at the age of 17, I was the bank roller. But I believed and believe in preparation. For me, everybody that will be successful has to fully be prepared. So at the age of 17, I started the journey to prepare myself for this day. I went to school. I went to the University of Ghana. Then I realized that there's a need for me to learn how to communicate. Through the message of my dad and my mom, I went to the Ghana Institute of Journalism to study journalism. Then I said to myself, if I develop the product that we all be yearning for, I need to know how to market this product. So what did I do? I studied marketing in London. Then I continued to dream. And I said to myself, OK, you know how to communicate. You know how to market. But you have to be modern. So I studied information technology to not learn how to use internet, computer. Then I asked myself one basic question. People speak about an industry, football industry. What does it mean? 
I tried to find answers. Then I said to myself, there's one part of the industry that we don't speak about. Tourism, sports tourism, football tourism. So what did I do? I studied hospitality management and tourism, also in England. This is what I call preparation, to be prepared for this day. Then I said to myself, I need to learn how to manage. So I studied an MBA in football at the prestigious University of Liverpool Business School. <laughs> Having come to that level, I said to myself, let me put everything in practice. So we set up Dreams Football Club 10 years ago. And today, we know that Dreams Football Club it's a force to reckon with. A brand that we are proud of. A brand that everybody will want to be part of. <laughs> now, beyond Dreams FC, I was blessed to be elected to serve on the executive committee of the Football Association. There was one singular job that was handed over to me, and that was when we secured the sponsorship for the product called the FA Cup. I served as a member of the committee, and then to be the vice, and then in 2017, I was appointed as the chairman of the MTN FA Cup. <laughs> and I'm chairperson. I am sure that if there's one product of the Football Association that we can all be proud of, we can all look up to, it is the MTN FA Cup. <laughs> it is the only product of the Football Association that has been able to hold its sponsor, MTN, for nine years running. This is historic. This is what I call preparation, preparing myself for this day. <laughs> Mr. Chairperson, Madam Chairperson, my vision for the revival of football in Ghana is to ignite passion and create wealth for all of us. To ignite passion and create wealth for all of us. This vision is anchored on four thematic areas. With your permission, we are talking about rebuilding trust for all and restoring the image and reputation of the Ghana Football Association. <laughs> Uniting the football family behind the shared values of transparency, accountability, and the prudent management and auditing of finances. Full utilization of best practices in good corporate governance, and most importantly, the promotion of gender equity. I am sure that if today we have a lady sitting in the chair, what that tells us is that we want to give a true meaning of offering opportunities for our ladies in the game of football. Let's clap for <laughs> Today, the Ghana Football Association is at the crossroad. The industry faces its biggest challenge of insufficient investment, divisions, administrative pitfalls, and of course, wrong perceptions. However, today also presents us with a new era, a new hope, a new opportunity to change the course of history and to tread new path. A path that projects a new Ghana Football Association which embraces all the principles of good corporate governance and accountability 
and serves as an example to other sports associations in Ghana and beyond. I share Alan Kay's view that the best way to, pre to predict the future is to create it. If you want to predict the future, you have to create it. Let us start to create the future we want for our industry, starting now with the following principles. <laughs> Transparency, accountability, and annual audit. Madam Chairperson, the bedrock of my vision will be transparency, accountability, and annual audits. There is no debate in this point because too many studies have concluded that transparency and proper accountability play vital and direct roles in sound, efficiently administered institutions. Gender and equity. The word all in my vision cannot truly be accomplished without embracing the essence and the full potential of the women's game and accord its right needed attention and investment. It is my vision to plug into the FIFA vision of increasing the number of quality female football players through the development and execution of various strategies, initiatives, and promotions to bring the women's football to the mainstream. How do we create or ignite passion and create the world for all key stakeholders? Not only Dreams FC, not Fankoba, and not Proud United alone, but for all of us. Before we can do that, we need to ensure that we prepare ourselves. We lay the foundation for that big takeoff. How do we prepare ourselves? by our intention to strictly administer clear infrastructural and logistical support to our football clubs in this country. All our clubs are wobbly. All clubs, here from Karila, Eric. How many footballs do you use at training? I'm sure you, you will not want to say it. My president is here, Mohamed Gigi Alifo. How many footballs do you use at your training? I'm sure he wouldn't want to disclose it. 